All right, so let's look at a linear growth problem, and then we'll look at an exponential growth problem. We can tell linear growth, even though it doesn't say it here, because there is an addition symbol in our um, recursive rule instead of having a multiplication symbol, which is exponential growth. All right, so let's, um, let's start with this one. Now, it tells us that our very first um, rule is that P the initial p-value is 50, all right? So to find p of 1, we just put 50 right here, and we get 50 plus 120, or 170. Now, I'm going to write that out because in a minute, when we do the explicit formula, it's going to help us. So that's how we got our 170. We just stuck our initial 50 right here. All right, now to get the next one in line, we stick the answer to this one in here. So we'll have 170 plus 120 is 290. Now I took this answer and I added 120. I got the first answer by taking 50 plus 120 and then I added this 120. So let's notice what we did in terms of a formula. This is actually 50 plus 120 times 1. And this, we did 120 times 2. So this was 50 plus 120 times 2. All right, so if we had to do a third one, we would add the 120 to the 290, but it would really be 50 plus 120 plus 120 plus 120, or 50 plus 120 times 3. So now it's easy to write our formula, because let's notice that this right here, the 1, the 2, even if we had a 3 for a third one, is the thing that's changing. So the formula is 50 plus 120 and the thing that's changing is the number of whatever this is, so in, all right? So notice that 1 is the 1 that's there, that 2 is the 2 that's there, and of course in, here for in, we'll have an in there. And now it's easy for us to figure out. So now as we do P100, we're going to stick the 100 right there, so we'll have 50 plus 120, and we will multiply by the 100 instead. And then let's stick that into our calculator. And that ends up giving us 12,050. Okay, so now let's look at an exponential growth model. And it gives us, fortunately, in this first one, it gives us something called a common ratio. That makes it easy because we've, we've already got what we need in order to set up formula. All right, so what we'll do is we'll take our initial amount of 12 and we're going to multiply it by this common ratio. So we'll have 12 times, it's a little bit hard to draw with this thing, 1.15. And that's going to end up giving us 13.8, which is what we'll go here. All right, now as we get ready to do P sub 2, we're going to multiply again by the common ratio. So we're going to take 13.8, multiply it by 1.15. So that's 12 times 1.15. We took that answer and we multiplied it by 1.15 again. And that is going to be 15.87. All right, so now notice that this is really 12 times 1.15 to the first power. And this is really 12 times 
1.15 to the second power, since we're multiplying it twice. All right, so for the p sub 1, it's to the first power. p sub 2, it's to the second power. So when we write an explicit formula, it's 12 times our common ratio, and our common ratio will always be the thing to the power. And for the nth one, it's going to be to the nth power. No, that's not written very well. There's not a decimal right there. It's just my uh, pen doesn't write too well. All right, now let's find p sub 10 by plugging it in here. So we will have 12 times 1.15 raised to the 10th power. And let's let our calculator do that. Now I get a fairly large decimal place, 48.5466923, but it says to uh, give the answers accurate to at least one decimal place. So I'm going to call it 48.5. There it is. Now let's look at one last one that doesn't have the common ratio, and we'll see that we can very easily find the common ratio. Um, and I don't know why that's showing, but all right. So common ratio, all we're going to do if we're not given it to begin with, as in question 10, let's notice that it's an exponential growth model. So to find the common ratio, if you're given your p sub 0 and your p sub 1, all you've got to do is take the p sub 1 and put it over the top of the p sub 0. And if you put that into your calculator, that's our common ratio, 1.2. And now, to do this problem, p sub n is always going to be 1.2 times whatever we had previously. All right, and our explicit formula somehow accidentally hit that thing, um, but you're going to use your p sub 0, and then it's always going to be what you've got for your common ratio raised to, and notice that common ratio, just like we saw up above, is the thing that's raised to the nth power. So just up above in the one that we just did, and I don't know why this is not moving, maybe. There we go. It was our common ratio that was raised to the nth power in our formula, and then our piece of zero is always in out front in our formula. And hope that hope that hopefully that will help you realize exponentials. You're going to have your piece of zero times that common ratio that you get raised to the nth power. And then for the linear ones, you're going to have your piece of zero plus whatever is being added over and over again times n for the linear ones.